Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Backscatter and Autophoto and Video very much for sponsoring this episode. Um, they stock and sell a wide range of camera and video, underwater camera and video gear, um, and also do servicing and repairs to most um, types of housing and equipment. And please head on over to backscatter.com to check out what they do. And I'm very pleased to be joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hey, Adam. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. And, and obviously, well, we've all been on some kind of lockdown and not been um, not been diving as much as we normally do. So, so I thought I'd ask Alex what his equipment's been doing while he's been out the water. Well, actually, I thought it was a it was a great opportunity this lockdown for things not to gather dust. And actually, mm. I've been quite proactive, and and actually, several of my bits of camera gear have been off doing things that they've they've never done before. Um, <laughs> and that is actually having some some TLC, some of those jobs that I'm always like, I really should do that that one day. So, I mean, um, for example, with my um, Nikonos RS fisheye, which is kind of one of my main fisheye lenses, um, the front element of this just after doing hundreds and hundreds and probably thousand dives or so with this this lens um it was beginning to get a bit of discoloration and mm. ccam offer a a front element grinding service which can help get rid of scratches or blemishes and that sort of thing and so i sent the lens off to 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 harold in in austria and and they took it apart and ground this front element so now it's it's lovely and shiny again and that's one of those jobs that I know if it hadn't been for lockdown, I'd always been like, oh, I really should get this just tidied up a little bit and never quite get around to it because there's always another trip coming up. And then I'd be like, yeah. oh, I'll just, you know, I'll do it after the next trip. And then there's another trip or a shoot coming up. I don't want to lose my lens for. So, um, yeah, really happy that I got that job done. It's now looking right. lovely and shiny. It looks um, great, super, yeah. Yeah. So that, that's, that's really nice going forward. And I think that for me has been one of the good things it's about just doing all those little jobs. I've, I've also um, bought some new fluorescent filters from, from Firedive, and they're currently at Retra getting put into mounts so they can clip straight onto the Retra strobes. Um, mm. I managed to persuade Retra that they needed to have mine so that they knew exactly what size to tell other people to get. So, <laughs> so I managed to hoodwink them into, into, into doing that for me as research for them. Um, so that I get some new um, um, fluorescent filters. Um, I have to, I have to admit that um, that I was diving last week as well, um, which has been wonderful. But um, I, having been not diving for such a long time and then going diving, I actually discovered I have holes in my dry suit, which I hadn't repaired. Ah, well, I bet that was nice in five degree water. <laughs> so, so so it's great there. I've been diving for months and getting the water to discover that there's holes that I should have repaired during lockdown, and they were there before, but I'd forgotten about them. So there you go. You're not you're, yeah. you're much more efficient than me, Alex. Cool. Well, particularly with, the, with the, the camera stuff. But the main thing that I did was um, I sent my underwater, my main underwater housing, which is my my D D850 housing. Um, I sent it to to Kevin Ackfoot in the UK, who does a lot of our housing repairs. And I'd mm. never ever been, you know, shooting with Subo housings, um, you know, for the majority of my underwater photography for more than 20 years. And I'd mm. never ever had one service before because Gosh. they they never needed it. Um, They've been working perfectly well. And I think particularly because I use them a lot, um, actually the fact that they're always in the water being used makes a, a big difference to, you know, to keeping them working. However, yeah. with an extended layout, it was a chance to both get a bit of TLC for the housing and get some of the, you know, the O-rings that normally just through use stay in really good conditions, particularly on the push buttons, get those all serviced and changed out. It was a, a really nice opportunity to do that. It also allowed me just to update and, and get Kevin to do a much better job than my own DIY had done on some of the modifications that I've done to the housing over time. And I don't tend to make any big changes to the housing, but particularly with some of the better electronic solutions that come along down the years, they're, they're really nice to fit in. So kind of the two big changes I've made to this housing is, first of all, the, the flash trigger board that you can see in here at the top. Yep. Um, that's the latest one from Underwater Technics. Um, which Pavel. gives me the yeah from Pavel, which gives me the the high speed sync. Now he sells those boards onto most of the housing manufacturers, so you know they might be branded Nauticam, they might be branded too well. This is actually one direct from him, um, yeah. but it, he knows what size to make them for each thing. So that was I could do that myself very easily because it was just taking those two screws out, 
putting the board in and tightening it up. And that obviously gives me fiber optic flash triggering through these sockets and gives me high speed flash sync capability with my retro pro flash guns. But it also keeps the the, the sync sockets working um, for normal electronic flash. So it's a nice all round solution for both. So I was going to ask that, Alex. So you've got you've there got fiber optic strobe triggering um, and you've also got um, electronic Nikonis. Those are Nikonis bulkheads, yeah? Yes. Yeah. 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 And, you know, if I'm, you know, and they both actually on the inside got separate little um, plugs on them. So if I'm having an issue on a ship, I can just disconnect one of these or, you know, if something's shorting out or anything. So the nice thing of Pavel's board is it's nice, you know, if, if something's know, yeah. playing up, you can yeah. just unplug something and stop it talking, um, yeah. which often solves a lot of the problems. So, yeah, really yeah. nice. And, you know, that was very, very easy to install on my own. Um, and it, it looks nice and neat with the, um, does, with yeah. the going up to the top. So, yeah, I'm really, really I happy. appreciate appreciate it's not probably relevant to your shoots, Alex, but is that TCL as well on both or is it just manual on both? Do you it, know? It does do TTL. I yeah. have never tried it. Yeah. And actually, I was thinking of trying it on one of the, the, the upcoming dives. Now, I'm sort of beginning to get back in the water in the UK. It's really cold at the moment. And yeah. I was thinking, I'm going to do a macro dive this spring using TTL. Because I've yeah. often said on Wet Picks Alive, when it's really cold and my fingers are cold, I yeah. should do more TTL. Um, yeah. And I never do it. And I just thought I would do it just for my education to see, you know, because, you know, despite having clear ideas about the way I want to go about my underwater photography, I always like to challenge myself and make sure that there isn't a better way of doing something. And yep. so, you know, particularly a lot of the time in cold water, like the spring in, in Europe, we get a lot of nudibranchs, a lot of yep. nudibranch photography. You're either snooting them or you're front lighting them. It's pretty, you know, particularly the front, if you're doing a front lighting dive, you're not taking your snoot in with you. Why not yep. stick the camera on TTL? Yeah, um, I, so I'm going to have a play with that. I, I certainly found that um, in, in Norway, at Gulen, um, at the Nudibranch mm -hmm. Safari, which is March in, in Norway, which is pretty cold. Um, and obviously I, I found there, I mean, I started off manual and, and pretty rapidly found that my, my fingers were starting to go and I couldn't adjust mm -hmm. and ended up switching into TTL. It was one of Pavel's boards, actually, as it happened. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, it was fine. You know, you know, for that subject matter, as you say, relatively uncomplicated lighting. And it worked really well. It was, you know, it was, yeah. it was, it was, it was great. Yeah. I, I yeah. always shot manually in Gulen, but yeah, it just, I, I think I'm going to try it just because, you know, I think it would be, you know, it's always important to check these things. So um, the main things that I've got, like, there's a massive great printout of all the things Kevin did in, in the service. Um, but I'll just run through a few of the, the kind of things that, that he does. So, you know, most services, they're going to be changing all the O-rings on all the controls that you can't do yourself. Um, yeah. And he actually changed the main housing O-ring as well. Um, he also made just a few little cosmetic things. My housing had a little bit of corrosion in this area here, which he's he's ground the corrosion away and re Re repainted that and it also had a little bit of corrosion um in this area here on the edge of the um oh, yeah. of the back there and he's also just ground away the corrosion and fixed that back up again so you know those things just really tidied up those elements mm. of, the, of the housing i think mm. you know mainly cosmetic it will help its longevity but i have yep. to say that those little bits of corrosion that that this housing was suffering weren't exactly stopping it working and we're never going to stop it working during my lifetime with it. But good to stay on top of these things when you've got the chance. Yeah. Um, obviously, you know, generally the Subal coating, you know, looks like new, even though this, you can tell how old this housing is by, by how the faint plates, these yeah. metal bits are, yeah, yeah, but the yeah. rest of the housing looks like it's come straight out of the factory, but it's, it's yeah, actually it done a, you know, a very hard amount of work. So the other main change that he's done is I've had a naughty cam vacuum valve on this housing for a long time. Um, people, often think, well, how come you're using a naughty cam valve on a, on a Subo housing? But nearly all the housings use these same size drilled holes for putting these accessories on. And you can very easily use different yeah. bits and pieces from different housings. So I have, which I think is the best valve, the naughty cam push button valve. Push button valve yeah. I like this valve because um, it's at any point you can depressurize it without any specialist equipment. Yeah. You can also pressurize it if it comes to it by, by using your mouth. Um, but obviously, you, you know, it's easier to use a pump. But I like the fact that you don't, if you forget the pump, you can still use the vacuum just with yeah. a little bit of embarrassment to yourself, um, yeah. which is a fairly. So I've had that on for a long time and I've had a naughty cam vacuum system inside the housing for a long time, but very badly fitted by me. And Kevin has done a fantastic job 
of fitting it super neatly into yeah, the left hand side of the housing. So yeah. there's the main controlling circuit board. There's the switch to turn it on. Yeah. And then he's got the battery hidden away down here. Um, and, it, and, and he shortened all the cables so it fits beautifully inside the housing. Um, I've got on the other side the standard Subal um, leak detector. detector. Um, yeah. Kevin actually told me that uh, an aquatic one is exactly the same size and has actually got a vacuum thing built into it. Wow. So if I didn't already own the um, the Nauticam one, it would have actually been even neater still because you could have put the whole um, Aquatica system in on this side in one go and it wow. would have done the whole thing. So I've actually got a, a leak detector and a vacuum board on the opposite side because um, I already own the vacuum board so he could fit it. Yeah. He just my one. Um, but what he has made me is a very nice um using another blanking plug on the on the on the housing using made me a very nice um leak oh, yeah. leak thing and it's got a nice screw thread in it and i think yeah. that's a really neat solution now i don't like that light to be visible to me as a photographer i find no. even that green light can be a distraction particularly yeah. on a night dive so i like that it's I, I thought this was a really good place for it because it's hidden from the viewfinder by this this strobe mounting point here which for yeah. me is really good um right. so that's kind of the main changes to the housing really a little bit of little bit of cosmetics um and mainly just servicing all those things um and making it look good there is a big long list and i don't mean to underplay all the things he's done i just those are the things i think are interesting to talk about but yeah, oh, yeah. It all, all the catches and switches all feel absolutely brand new again um you know even though you can see how old the housing is but how 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 faded these things are but actually the the metal of the housing looks looks brand new the viewfinder is considerably older than the housing. That's why yeah. the viewfinder looks even more, um, even more worn away. But yeah, no, I'm very happy with how it's looking. And having been diving with the D5 while this was away, I'm also looking for a camera that's not quite so heavy to carry down in for the shore dives. Yeah, perfect. Um, you mentioned the vacuum bit. Um, I know that actually Batscatter do do um, their vacuum system, mm -hmm. um, which is an external gauge where you, where you pull a pull a vacuum. Mm -hmm. But they actually supply a variety of adapters, so it allows you to use it with pretty much almost any housing. I think it's a really mm -hmm. good point that you raise is that you know we can select bits from different manufacturers and apply them to different housings to get the best of each, can't we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and th that is a good point because although the thread that most of these things screw in on is exactly the same housing to housing. The space around the holes is not always the same. Quite right. often the manufacturers will make these things very small to fit neatly on the housing and you then can't necessarily, I'm lucky on this housing that all these separate ones all have space around them. But right. I know on other housings, these can often be, you know, the, the housing manufacturers put them in a nice neat place. I also replaced, um, reminds me, these are both brand new on, on the housing now. Um, right. the, the, sinks, the old ones were working but had corrosion on them. And yep. I just thought, oh, well, the housing's out of the water. I don't know what that corrosion in there has been doing for the, it's been quite a long time since I've used these because yep. I've not done any overseas trips and it tends to be when I use them more is with my yep. overseas strobes rather than my UK strobes. It's been yep. over a year since I've been overseas shooting. So I thought it was a good time to change them because it may well be several more months before I'm away again overseas, able to use them again. Yep. So yeah, so that, that's so, yeah, nice to have it back as it were. It's like getting your, getting your toys back, Alex. Yeah, and it nearly fell off the desk then. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that happen. Um, no, that's wonderful. Thank you for that, Alex. Um, so obviously that's going to be going underwater soon. Um, and we're going to see some UK images of it. Where are people going to see those first then, Alex? Um, well, I'll generally try and share the old one on Instagram. And also my Instagram posts directly also to my facebook alex mustard underwater photography page so it's the same the instagram post directly to that but i do yep. put other things on that facebook page as well so facebook or instagram instagram alex mustard one facebook alex mustard underwater photography brilliant thank you very much alex um and thank you for talking us through that um, I'd like to thank Backscatter again very much for sponsoring this episode. Um, our sponsors are very important. They, they let us make the episode, so so please support them too. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. Please add any comments um, in the comment section and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.